This conference will now be recorded. Hi, everybody. It's uh, Chris here with Royal LePage Benchmark. I've got Mark Woley on the line from uh, Royal LePage Kitchener and Waterloo. Uh, Mark's been a really good friend of mine for a while now, and he's a great resource. Mark, what's going on on your side of the world? Well, you know, Chris, it's, it's uh, I mean, the thing we can all say is that we're all in this boat together, right? It's it's pandemic 24-7. Uh, you got to stop watching CNN for a few minutes. But, you know, it's it's interesting how geography doesn't make a difference for this scenario. It's it's from co coast to coast. We're all going through the same things right now. So, yeah, a lot of the same things as you guys are going through. Yeah, same problems we have in Calgary, you have in Kitchener and Waterloo. Isn't it? it's, it's probably the first time ever that we can say our markets are almost identical, eh? Might be the only time. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah. kidding. Yeah. So, Mark, I'm uh, doing a lot of work with my agents right now. And, uh, you know, we're trying to come up with a whole bunch of different ways to keep our businesses going and to, you know, keep, keep the pipeline full and, you know, be respectful and tactful of people, uh, you know, given the times. What are some of the things that you're coaching everybody to do over there? Well, I mean, I think the first thing that I would say is 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 kind of what you're hearing in through through government channels and, and all of our different levels of, of real estate. First thing is is making sure that all the agents are taking this situation seriously. Um, right. You know, we've got lots of communications with our guys, as I'm sure you guys do as well, and 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 from Royal Page about um, you know making sure that they are are communicating. They're educated a on what's going on. Uh, they are b communicating with their buyers and sellers as to what's going on and how that's affecting the real estate market, and and really trying to get people uh, for the short term at least on board with hey let's take a pause if we can unless it is an essential buy like if you need to buy or sell then we've got checklists on what we do need to do as buyers and, and listing agents to to do uh, work remotely and virtually to be a safe for everybody involved so that's the first thing is trying to make sure that they're all taking that seriously uh, you know not that they're those kids on the beach in, in Daytona that are all partying at uh, March break you know what I mean we've, we've yeah. got to make sure that, that all our agents are communicating and doing a really good job with their consumers so that they know uh, how serious this is and then what our precautions are and then kind of what you and I talked about earlier is staying positive um, you know sometimes it's not easy to stay positive in, in a time like this but um, you know it, this is uh, I was saying something in one of my groups the other day uh, I said boy I'd like to go back to having all the complaints about uh, my agents complaining about too many multiple offers because this <laughs> really gives your perspective right this kind of market, it, okay. it's perspective yeah, that's so true um, you know, you, you uh, mentioned something that, that I think is interesting. The other day I did a webinar about building trust in real estate and right. uh, checklists were one of the things that uh, that I talked about, but I talked about it from the client's perspective. So not the realtor's checklist. The realtor knows their process, right? They know they've got to do this thing, this thing, and this thing. But you're suggesting right. you're suggesting that we have checklists that help both the realtor and the client understand what the expectations are as they go through the process now, aren't you? Absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, one thing it's hard to be, it's hard to be educated. I know you guys uh, at Benchmark do a great job educating your realtors on what the issues are. And and I, I mean, you and I have been in doing this long enough to know this is this is a time that's like no other. And, and I think the time that myself and my management team have spent over the last two weeks is just making sure that we're as educated as we can on, on, on what's going on in order to give best practices and the best way to keep our guys safe and and uh and moving forward in this environment right so but you know the agents sometimes you know there's so much information going around that you got to work through some of the noise right i mean right. if you try and watch cnn 24 7 you, you know you're gonna want to jump off a cliff right so it's about <laughs> being educated but yet streamlining it so that you know okay what is it that we can use and what can't we use right right yeah for sure so what do the agents do right now to make sure that they don't get paralyzed in COVID 19 that they can actually keep momentum in their business and keep some revenue coming in yeah well that's a good question i, I think um again right now I, I you know i heard you talking to wade the other day and, and i'm a big routine guy you know that that's yeah. kind of my thing is i kind of try to do the same thing all the time and it, i find that when I have my systems and my processes in place and then I get routine, it becomes habitual and it's easier to be effective and, and you're more streamlined. And I think what we're telling our guys, and I'm assuming I, I, you know, it's probably all across the country is making sure that when you're now off and you're, you're isolated at home, uh, that you're not, you know, just lying on the couch and taking it easy. You got to make sure that you still get up at a reasonable hour that maybe you exercise and get a little, you know, go out for walks or do your, your home gym workouts 
uh, and then and then schedule yourself to to um, you know whether you can stick to your old plan. Obviously, maybe not. You got to modify that to to today's digital uh, environment because, like, let's say you know Popeyes that Brian Buffini would want, you can't really do those. But aside from modifying your plan, is having a you know redoing a new plan for this environment and then and then sticking to it and scheduling it and staying with it rather than you know I found myself being the first couple of days of, of March break you know, all of a sudden you're waking up at, you know, later than you normally would and, and you're lying around a little bit more and then you become yeah. lethargic, you can't get anything done, right? right. So I think the more the more re- routine you can make it, uh, even just getting outside a little bit too. I found myself, my wife and I went for a drive the other day and it felt like, you know, we'd been in jail. Yeah. So all of a sudden, just a nice drive. We didn't talk to anybody. We just drove around a little bit and out into the country, just getting out in a different environment, kind of recharged our batteries a little bit, right? Yeah, that makes all the difference in the world. And I totally agree with you having a schedule. You know, that's just like showing up to work, right? Yeah. Like just because we're at home and we and we can't go out and do this the same things the way that we've always done it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be getting up, getting showered, putting on some clothes and getting ready to actually go to work with some intention and doing things yeah. by design. Yeah, right? absolutely. So I, I 100% agree with you. The schedule is super important. But you kind of made me think of something else as you were saying that. So how are you, how do you feel, Mark, about the, all the work that we did back in November and December when we were business planning? Right. So, cause our business plans are changed now too, right? Absolutely. So what does that look like? What are some of the things that we need to consider, you know, going forward with respect to business planning and being prepared for what comes? Well, and I think that's where, again, you guys and, and, and Corinne and you, uh, you know, your guys have great resources to rely on you guys to maybe reach out and say, Hey, I know this was my business plan in November, and maybe now I've got to redo my business plan, or I've got to I've got to streamline my systems, or I got to change my systems, my prospecting systems mainly, um, you know, because of the environment that we're in for now. And they lean on their leaders like you guys in order to to have the help to be able to do that, um, you know, or or maybe one on one, you know, not one on one obviously, but you know, Skype meetings or something like that, accountability still. So I mean, that's where they can lean on the leaders like you guys and redo their plan, redo their, their, their business plan as well. And then, and then maybe have, have, uh, accountability still meetings with you guys that they can do online to keep them on track and that kind of thing. But I think, I think, you know, if, if they can adapt, that's the thing, right? I mean, not, not only is business this way in my mind, but, uh, this environment is constantly changing. Like what happens right. today is different than what happens tomorrow. And it's, it's just yeah. constantly changing. But I think that's where the, the agents, you know, the, the, the the genesis of what they have to do to me is in the prospecting end you know right now they can there's so many things they could be doing because they have the time right i know you and wade talked about it yesterday and cleaning up their databases and doing all the administrative stuff cleaning up their presentations you know modifying their 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 prospecting systems and then obviously maybe in this case using a lot more video and social media learning doing more courses which i know roll of page is great and doing webinars with Richard Robbins or your stuff. There's so much time that they can have not only to streamline what it is and perfect what they do, but then redo their plan for prospecting, lean on you guys to be able to help right. them create the, recreate the plan and then follow through with it, right? Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. We're right bang on. So so we talked about um, you know checklists. We talked about having a routine, you know, some some elements around time blocking and stuff like that, you know, redoing business plans. What's something else? Is there anything else that agents need to be thinking about right now? Yeah, I mean, I, we talk about yeah, it. I just our totally put you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Don't worry about it. No, I knew you were going to come prepared. No, I mean, the process, you know, I mean, you, you know as well as I do that, that, you know, I've been doing this long enough to know that, you know, prospecting not necessarily is the best agent, the, the most productive, right? Um, but what they need to realize, all agents need to realize if they want to succeed is they got a prospect. And so now all of a sudden having to figure out, I would, I would suggest, and I hate to say this, I hate, I think that the majority of agents don't really have a plan or a system in order uh, in when it comes to prospecting, right? I agree. And they, they need those, those specific plans to be able to, to, to implement and then stay with them and follow them. And, and I think now, again, leaning on you guys to be able to change whatever that plan is or create it. If they don't have one yet, if they've just kind of, you know, been fortunate that they know people and, and through open houses or, or face-to-face communication, they're really good at getting leads. Now, all of a sudden, you got to use other methods like social media, uh, video. Uh, you know, I heard uh, Wade talking about it yesterday, which I thought is great. I mean, I was a call guy, right? So to me, 
I'd be on the I'd be on the phone right now every day all day just calling people in my database saying hey are you guys okay is there anything I can help with you know just checking in I think they would love that that you would take the time just to see how they're doing much right. less what a lot of great people are doing is saying hey I'm healthy if you need help picking up groceries or toilet paper or whatever it is I'm here to help and 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 posting I think I think another big thing that we do in, in prospecting when it comes to social media and things like that is making sure that we're giving content that the other person is interested in. So it has nothing to do with me, right? It's not about Mark winning an award or Mark doing this or that. It's about information that you know the, the your consumer or that your database will find valuable, right? Not all yep. COVID information, but you know maybe uh, you know I, I've seen a few of our agents are doing spotlight on businesses that do great takeout or right. delivery or things like that. Or there's, uh, you can do, um, uh, some of our agents are doing B2B interviews where they'll do a video and kind of like you and I are doing, but they might do it with a home inspector or they might do it with a banker or they might do it with a financial advisor and just get their take on how this is affecting their business. Because if I put that out to my my database, maybe that's something they find interesting right now, right? So oh, the two okay. chats, I'll, I'll tell you, Chris, one thing I love is, is again, the network that we have with Royal LePage, the opportunity uh, with 19,000 realtors and and the culture that Royal Page has as of sharing, um, I'm seeing on the Royal Page Conference Scores Group, you know, people on there all the time, and they're setting up, um, you know, poker games, and they're setting up yeah. all these different visual events. I know I got caught on on as a guy in Guelph, I wasn't paying attention to the thread, and he says, "Hey, does anybody know of an online trivia game?" And we use this thing in our office called Kahoot. Kahoot, so yeah, I know it. Yeah, you know Kahoot. Yeah. So it's a great quiz. And so we did on Friday. Uh, we're doing a cocktails and Kahoot quiz with our agents. So we got on a Zoom call. We had like 35 people. You know, we talk about what what each of them are drinking, and then we do this quiz. So on their on their screen, the quiz shows up, and you can make the quiz whatever you want, right? But yeah. so somebody was asking on the conference scores group, "Hey, Mark, could you put that together and and put it on for all the royal pages across the country?" I thought, what a no, I haven't done it yet. But what a great idea. It's a platform again. And I know you created your own group in there. There's so many of those groups that the agents could, um, you know, put a game together or put some information together, even reaching out to all the different people in the network that, you know, to talk to each other now, see what they're doing, see what somebody in BC is doing in yep. their business. There's such a great uh, opportunity for us as Royal Pagers that most brands and, and, and brokers don't have, right? Yeah. And you know, Mark, one of the fun things about that is that agent networking is one of the best ways to to uh, add a layer to your business. And so awesome. we, you know, we were kind of talking about it earlier. You know, the whole point of having conferences and hiking groups and all that kind of stuff is so that we can make connections with people in our network across the country and then business and referrals and stuff go back and forth. And we yeah. need to be intentional about uh, contacting each other, networking with each other, you know, checking out, are you okay? What's it like over there? You know, really creating those bonds and those friendships and keeping that going uh, as part of our business strategy. Not, you know, aside from the fact that it's just a fun thing to do and we like talking right. to each other, right? But yeah, uh, yeah agent networking is super important. So it's it's not just your clients that need that. We need that as agents because most of us are extroverted people and we're stuck in little boxes right now going, ah! Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know what? It's funny because I know when I when I first started with Royal Page, I was an agent and, you know, I had young kids. And, and so I didn't really take in. I didn't get involved as much in the networking with Royal Page. And then when I bought the brokerage uh, about 11 years ago, I decided, you know what? I better kind of like you said, I better walk, walk, talk the talk. I better walk the walk. So I started going to all these events and, and met great people like yourself and Wade Webb and all these other people all over the country. And a like you said, they're just great people. So they're fun to be around. And, and not even from a, um, I find the most value, not even the referral part of it, but the information part of it. Like you right. and I share stuff all the time, or there's so many brokers that are willing to share information with each other and what they do. And it's so helpful because I know we were an in independent brokerage before. We had nothing like that. Yeah, like if you wanted to create that kind of stuff, oh man, you kidding? You'd never <laughs> be able to find it. You have to pull it out of your own brain. Yeah. I, yeah. I used to make and my head age, smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm no kidding. The agents, the agents can do the same thing as we do as brokers, right? And 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 now it's just they've got more time, so why not reach out to other Royal of Pages within the network, whether it's through those groups or not, and yeah. find out how they're doing and introduce yourself and, and keep in touch with them. I mean, I've got agents now, and I'm sure you have the same, that they realize the, the value of the brand and the value of that networking and, and the yeah. information and everything. 
I got agents making six digits just from Royal Page referrals. Yeah, that's so true, hey? Yeah, yeah they all should be doing it. Yeah, and you know what? They, like People want this right now. So I started that group yesterday, Mark. It's called Royal Page uh, Big uh, Business Success Strategies or something like that. Yeah. And in one day, man, almost 1,400 people joined the group. One day. So yeah, what does that tell you? People want to connect. They want to share. They want to do these things. So if you're somebody that's listening on the call today and you've got a great resource, uh, jump on that group, share it with everybody. Let's talk about it. Let's have some engagement around it and let's help each other uh, pull ourselves out of this COVID-19 thing and, and make sure that we're all successful as we go forward. I mean, that's kind Absolutely. of the spirit of the brand. That's how what Royal Page is about. I mean, I think, you know, it's funny. I saw something on the news the other day with, with I think it was first in Italy, but you're seeing stories across the globe of, you know, at 7.30 at night, all the neighbors are going onto this, you know, out in front of their streets and they'll bang their pots in, in uh, recognition of the healthcare workers. So you'll see a guy in Italy that's on the top of, a, of an apartment building and there's 10 other apartment buildings around there and he's running a, like a, a, a Pilates class or something like that. So the, the 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 camaraderie and and of, of knowing we're all in it together is comforting, right? And and again, like you said, the the we got 19,000 of us. So why don't you lean on each other and and it helps you be positive. You realize that that uh, other people are doing things that that uh, um, are going to be valuable. I, I one thing I know, I'm I'm not I'm not I'm not a smart person, but I can I'm smart enough to know that I don't know smart. it. All. <laughs> so I, am willing, I am so willing to take somebody else's idea. I don't care if it's if it's not my idea or not. It doesn't matter. If it's a good idea, then run with it, right? Yeah, 100%. R&D, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Rip off I and do it. your ideas all the time. Uh, same, same. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm in your Google Drive. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mark, I really appreciate you taking time to chat with me today. Um, I, hopefully, everybody who's tuned in here will uh, will get some value out of it. I know I did. Um, just stay on the line there, and uh, I'll chat with you in a sec. But uh, for sure. everybody else who's listening, Mark Woolley, uh, Royal Page Kitchener, Waterloo, fantastic guy, broker owner. Uh, I couldn't say much more. Uh, I couldn't say enough good things about you, actually. You know, oh, not to get all sappy and stuff, but I love you and you're a great guy and I really appreciate you, Mark. Hey, man, your guys at Benchmark are lucky to have you two, you and Corinne both. So, uh, you know, they, they, I'm sure they know that. I probably don't have to tell them that, but they got two excellent people. A, that you guys are in it for the right reasons and you really want your people to do well and you care about them and that you're constant. You guys are always coming up with different things to do. And I think, I think they're in awesome hands. So they're lucky. Thanks, buddy. Talk soon. Good to see you, bud.